Wow. <laughs> so I've just finished watching the ICOM IC905 demo presentation video that ICOM have just released. Um, uh, speechless, absolutely speechless. Uh, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go through all of the features, all of the um, functions that the radio has. We're going to have a, a first look at the radio, have a look at uh, the RF module, how that's going to operate, and maybe some opinions on what ICOM have done. But uh, just early on, well done. Well done, ICOM. This is this is amazing. So as you can see here, that it's all of the VHF, UHF, and SHF bands up to 10 gigahertz. Now, if I just pause that back there, you could see that there is CX10G required. So there is an optional extra for 10 gigahertz. Okay, so here it is, the ICOM IC905, 144, 430, 1200, 2400, 5600, and 10 gigahertz. Now, uh, it looks like all modes, SSB, CW, FM, AM, RITI, uh, DV voice, digital data, ATV, amateur television, analog amateur television. We'll go into that a little bit later. So we mentioned again, so ICOM mentioned this in their promotional video. They say that this is the first amateur transceiver to operate in all of these bands simultaneously. So here's another screenshot of the uh, amateur television button and some of the modes that are available uh, with the IC905. Now this is an interesting one and I'll just hide myself so that you can see here the output power for this radio. It is 10 watts on 2 meters, 70 centimeters and 1.2 gigahertz. So a uh, little bit less than an IC9700, obviously, on the 144 and 430 megahertz bands, but on 1.2 gigs, 10 watts, the same amount of power that you get out of an IC9700, so that's interesting. 2.4 gigahertz, 2 watts, and 5.6 gigahertz, 2 watts as well. So that's an interesting amount of power. That's uh, probably about on par with what... A, uh, a other transverters out there that you can purchase uh, have 10 gigahertz will be half a watt so that's an interesting one and we'll have a look at the transverter that comes with this particular unit a little bit later on so we're looking at the head unit here this is the ic905 head unit looking at the side there we have an sd card slot at the top usb-c down the bottom i'm really glad that they went usb-c and not a usb micro um, USB micro cables are so hard to find and they're annoying. Uh, USB-C is becoming the new standard. You can also see too that there's two LAN ports. So they've got a LAN cable port, which is your local area network, but then there's also a LAN cable port for connection to the RF module up on top of the tower. So that's very important. So it looks like this will be remotable as well. Um, interesting too that it's got a heat sink on the back. I'm assuming that's because this particular unit is obviously powering the RF module up on the tower So uh, and 10 watts. So that's going to require a bit of heat dissipation. There's the AV in and out. Um, all the other connections that you would normally find again on an IC705 power as well. Um, speaker microphone all that sort of thing so that sort of stock standard that we've already seen before on a 705 this is where it gets really interesting amateur tv in fm mode and look there's a live demo there of an analog uh, atv amateur television picture you can also make it full screen so um, analog television is possible now with the ic905 which look the the that function in itself that's not been available on any commercial unit that i know of it's always been homebrew stuff homebrew amateur tv um, transmitters and receivers that you've had to build but it looks like they've they've integrated this into a nice commercial package um, icon so that's great i know a lot of people might be disappointed with the fact that it's not digital amateur television because uh, DVBS and stuff like that. I think it's DVBS, DVBT. Uh, digital amateur television seems to be, you know, the future because we gave away analog television a long time ago. But at the end of the day, this is still pretty cool and we'll be uh, uh, not sure what the maximum resolution supported or the or anything like that. But uh, maybe just the ICOM 905 screen, what it can decode, the resolution, uh, probably whatever uh, analog uh, TV's uh, standard is, but uh, but pretty pretty cool to be able to receive live 
television pictures. And this just this opens up a whole new world. We know with SSTV and things like the International Space Station sends SSTV, maybe we could get live pictures being able to be decoded off the International Space Station in time with with something like this. Who who knows? It's just the 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 uh, the 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 future is endless. I, I just I, I'm lost for words actually. Just how good this product is. This is an interesting bit. The IC905 consists of the controller and the RF module. So you can see there that the the controller, which is looking like the IC905 unit, that there is driving an RF module. So all of the RF two meters and above, two meters, seventy centimeters, twenty three centimeters. 2.4, 5.6, and 10, they're all in that RF module. Sorry, not 10, 10's in a transverter, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. They're all in that RF module. So very, very interesting design. And we could see here that what they're doing is, is they're using a like LAN cable, the... which is connected between the RF module and the controller. And this is going to be powering those RF modules from the controller up there in that top unit. So here's the basic diagram of what they've uh, they've got going on here. Now, they say that it's a 20 meter long run of LAN cable. That's the example that they're using. They haven't specified the maximum length um, in this video, but they, they're going by 20 meters, which is, the, uh, which is the, the, the example. So we can sort of go off that. So basically the controller sits down the shack, you run a LAN cable up to the RF module at the top of the tower, very, very short piece of coaxial cable to the antenna and that's how you reduce uh, coaxial cable loss. So we already knew that from the SHF project that that's what they were working on. So they've got this diagram here too of it operating at home and also mobile or out in the field. So that's uh, pretty cool. Didn't <laughs> didn't they've really thought this out, which is which is excellent. Um, yeah, it's it's this this is a game changer in the microwave and SHF field for sure. So again, as we mentioned, it's PoE technology. So PoE uh, technology will be implemented, which basically powers the RF module at the top of the tower and then that way they go through here and say that they can eliminate the amount of power loss um, that would be otherwise seen with a normal DC cable. So this is also another key bit as well with that LAN cable. It's going to be supplied with a LAN cable. So I mentioned about the 20 meter length. I would assume that that means that this is going to be supplied with a 20 meter length of cable. That's all that we can sort of get out of that. Um, but it will be supplied with a LAN cable. No doubt you could probably uh, make your own as well, uh, shielded shielded cable, CAT6 cable or something like that, but it will be supplied with a cable. So what do you think of the ICOM IC905 so far? Is this going to be a game changer for the ham radio community in the SHF bands? Please let me know below. Okay, so this is another question that a lot of you guys have been asking about and it sort of stems back to the IC9700 talking about the frequency accuracy and stability of this unit so obviously at the shf frequencies you need uh, quite good frequency stability and accuracy so just going back through here they go through uh, some examples of talking about the uh, various drifts that can happen if you just have an oven controlled crystal oscillator so um, here's here's some examples 0.3 parts per million in 10 years, that's 1.5 parts per million, but at 5.6 gigahertz, that means that it's going to drift 8.4 kilohertz, which is outside of the pass band of SSB. So that means that your free, your radio will no longer be on frequency. So what they've done is they have decided to go ahead with their idea of the one pulse per second clock uh, GPS signal, which is built in, and there's the antenna on the actual unit itself. So... Um, they haven't gone with an external frequency input reference. I kind of uh, mentioned this in a previous video that I did about the uh, possible drawbacks of not using an actual frequency reference and rather relying on the one pulse per second clock, but it seems like that they've been managed to, to solve that issue and um, if, it, if, it, uh, if it manages to fix that, then, then all well and good. So that's basically the frequency stability option that is available. There is no external uh, input available, just the internal uh, input of, the, or just the internal GPS. Now, this is the other interesting bit. So this is the 10 gigahertz, the CX10G. So it is a full transverter. It is a optional item. So this 
Uh, oh, and it also comes with an antenna. So they've got vertical collinear antennas for 10 gigahertz, which they are releasing. Um, the, there's there's been nothing like this at all on the market. So you can see there, let me just hide myself again. They've got the SHF, the main SHF module, which is down the bottom here. And then they've got the transverter for 10 gigahertz. Now, there's quite a few connections on that and we'll go through that in a second. And then that connects obviously to the antenna. So you could either use the ICOM collinear, which is a vertical, which is probably gonna get you very, very short range, at least on 10 gigahertz, or you could pair it with a, a little dish, uh, which will get you even further. I find that quote interesting that they've written there. SHF operation will become more familiar and easier to work going forward. Now, that that there in itself shows to me that ICOM are committed to amateur radio worldwide. They know that the bands that are above, say, 1.2 gigahertz, 1.2 gigahertz probably wasn't as popular until the IC9700 or even the IC910H before it came out. But since those radios were released, it just become commonplace and a lot of people love experimenting and playing with 1.2 gigahertz. The fact now that they're going even higher is something that I think is, it's a real testament to ICOM in how much they are investing in amateur radio. So it's going to make those bands more easier to access and it's going to be good too for hams that can't put up big antennas so if they're only interested in vhf and above and they're not interested in say um, hf operation or they live in an apartment or something they can put up something like this on a small mast because it doesn't take up a lot of room and it looks you know fairly innocuous really um, i don't think the size of those particular units are very big so it, it opens up a whole new world for them as well so we already talked about the amateur television input and output, so that's fine. Uh, it's SD card slot, USB connection, so USB-C it looks like. Uh, optional antennas, so we spoke about the 10 gigahertz band antenna, but it looks like they've also got an AH24 for the 2.4 gigahertz band, an AH56 for the 5.6 gigahertz band, and AH100 for the 10 gigahertz band. So you'll be able to uh, get some collinear antennas straight out of the box with this particular unit. If you're liking what you're seeing with the IC905, then please hit that thumbs up and also the subscribe button as well. That will help to push this video out to more and more people to hopefully discover the IC905 and the SHF bands. So this is now the very, very interesting part. This is the RF module. So we can already have a look. We've got uh, four antenna connections. We've got the SMA type connector for 5.6 gigs, the SMA type for 2.4 gigs, and an N-type connector for 2 meters, 70 centimeters, and 1.2 gigs. And of course, the GPS antenna that we spoke about earlier as well. So it looks like you'll be able to connect all of your antennas up. You might require a diplexer for the to, to splitting off the 2 meter, 70 centimeter, and 1.2 gigs if you want to run those all simultaneously. But yeah, very interesting. The one thing that I kind of thought about this is that there's no, not that I can see at least anyway, without looking at the, um, we might have to wait for the technical manual or the, or the specifications to come out, but it doesn't look like there's any inputs or outputs for a preamp, an external preamp or an external amplifier if you want more power. Now, um, arguably you could say, well, two watts is, is quite a lot on 2.4 gigahertz, but if you want to be able to get more power out, maybe if you want to do EME, um, same to 5.6 gigs if you want to do EME or you want to try and get a little bit uh, further distance because you need more power. Um, obviously, you can hook up a high gain antenna, but yeah, it doesn't look like you can hook up a, an external amplifier. You might be able to, I'm not sure. We'll have to check in the specs a bit later on. Same too with 2 meters 70 and 1.2 gigs. You're sort of limited to that 10 watts coming out of the RF module as well. But Again, you've got the RF module up at the top of the, the mast and a very short piece of coax to the antenna. So the losses are going to be reduced quite quite substantially. Uh, it's also of interest for those who are in Europe as well with, uh, I think it's QO100 geostationary satellite. Not sure exactly how much power you require on the uplink and downlink. Uh, well, the uplink, sorry, on that particular satellite. The uplink is, of course, on 2.4 gigahertz. Two watts into maybe a high gain dish will be more than enough. So this is a look at the bottom of the of the unit. Now, I did mention again that we're not sure about preamp or other outputs such as uh, external switching 
for power amplifiers, but it does have an accessory port on the bottom. Now that's mainly, I think, for joining to the 10 gigahertz module. It might have output switching for um, other maybe preamps or amplifiers. We'll see what happens. There's also a reference output, a 10 megahertz reference output. So that's interesting. So they're using the one pulse per second signal out of this unit and they are generating a 10 megahertz output. Now I'm assuming, and I think that this is correct when we move on to the 10 gigahertz unit, that they're actually taking the 10, gig, 10 megahertz output, which is a BNC connector, and they're putting that straight into the 10 gigahertz unit. So they're not doing one pulse per second. So um, again, uh, robust I IPX5 waterproof rating, which is what you would expect for a unit outside, obviously. So that, again, another closer look here at the 10 gigahertz transverter. So there's a BNC connector on it that we can see. So I'm assuming that that's the 10 gig input straight in. Now, if we have a look at the overall layout here of the 905 system with the remote. So again, we mentioned about that BNC connector. So it looks like we've got a couple of connections here. So we've obviously got the 10 gig antenna connection, which goes up into the transverter. We've also got a connection which I think is looks like the 10 megahertz input, I reckon, into the yeah out of the SHF um, uh, module into the transverter, and then we've also got the it looks like, I think that's being driven. So that's being driven from 2.4 gigs. It looks like that port. So I reckon that what they're doing is is they're driving the 10 gigs transverter from 2.4 gigahertz. So that's interesting that they're not driving it from VHF or UHF because that would have made the optional um, the optional 10 gigahertz transverter sort of open actually to other users. It might still be, not sure. Um, those maybe who have existing 2.4 gig transverters will find that interesting, but that just looks like on the diagram, they've got that cable coming out and into the, um, into the uh, C, uh, what was it? The CX10G. ICOM UK have released this uh, particular brochure now, which is the pre-release information. This basically just goes over the same stuff that we saw in the video. Um, there's, I don't think uh, anything else here that we uh, really haven't covered. Again, these are the, the options that we've got. So the accessory connector for the optional CX10G. So it'd be interesting to see what pinouts are actually on the bottom of that. Notice one thing that I really, really like is that ICOM Australia is uh, is labeled down the bottom here. So ICOM Australia, if you're watching, please, 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 we want one of these uh, for our Ham Radio Expo in November. We really do. Um, but uh, not sure when it's going to be available. Um, have to keep an eye on ICOM America and uh, and all of the other ICOM distributors here to make that announcement. But well done, ICOM Japan. Uh, just this is this is an amazing amazing achievement to be able to come out with a unit which can do uh, two meters and above up to ten gigs, not including three point four gigahertz. Three point four gigahertz is actually an interesting one because I think they've left that out due to the uh, band being taken over, especially in the United States. We still have a slight portion of spectrum here in Australia, but I can understand why that wasn't included. 220, obviously, as we mentioned before, why that wasn't included. But well done, ICOM. Um, again, proving that you really do care about amateur radio innovation um, because this is just, this is, this is an amazing um, piece of kit. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting my hands on one to, to play around with it, to see how it integrates with my existing transverters and doing some uh, tests like that. So, um, yeah, it's let's aim ever higher. Yeah, the, they've, they've taken the SHF project and they've actually exceeded my expectations at least. So, um, yeah, well done, well done, ICOM. So what's all the hype about these microwave bands anyway, the SHF bands? Well, if you click on this playlist over here to gigahertz and beyond, you'll see exactly what all of the hype is about and the fun that can be had with the microwave bands.